All right, so now that we know, hopefully we have Box2D, we've downloaded, we're up and running, we need to answer this question. How does it work anyway? Like, what's go what, How does Box2D work? So let's first, before we get there, let's first think about how a regular non-Box2D sketch works in processing. Okay, so what, what does a processing sketch have? It has setup, <laughs> and it has draw. And in setup, maybe you create all the objects in your world, right? You, you create a bunch of objects. Create a bunch of objects. And then what happens in draw? Every time, every time the sketch cycles over and over and over again, we calculate the motion of every object, and then we draw every object. So we calculate, I'll say calculate the physics. You know, location, add velocity, velocity, add acceleration, add apply force. We do all this stuff with everything. And then what do we do? We draw everything. So this is kind of how we've been writing our sketches. What we're looking to do with Box2D is replace this line with ask Box2D to calculate the physics, right? We still need to create everything, and we still need to draw everything. But we don't need to update all of their locations and do all of that math. Box2D is going to do it. We can think of Box2D essentially as this magic box, right? There's this magic box, <laughs> 2D, right? And what we do is we create a bunch of objects and set up, and we put them in the magic box. And then every time through magic, every time through draw, we say, hey, magic box, where is everything? Where is everything? It's a very strange diagram here saying, OK, what we're going to do is create everything put everything in the box, we're going to say, hey, there's a whole bunch of squares and a whole bunch of rectangles and a bunch of triangles, and they all start here, and then go. We back away slowly, and we just say, where is everything drawn on the screen? Where is everything drawn on the screen? And we don't know how its stuff is moving. That's up to Box2D. It's taking care of that. So the good news about a scenario like this is we don't have to do all of that physics math, our code, and figure it out and debug it. It's all done for us. The bad news about a scenario like this is we lose a lot of control here. We are just kind of just saying, draw everything, draw everything, and I'm sure you're doing it correctly. Thank you very much. And, most, and, and, and so this is a good thing. Some projects, this is perfect for. Other projects, this is not so perfect for. And this is the question you're going to have to ask yourself when you're kind of figuring out what tool to use to create what you're creating. But so this, so this is the overall structure. And we're going we're gonna to see how this works um, in, a, in an actual code example in the next video. I'm not timing this, shoot. But in this video, I have a couple more things that I want to talk about. Uh, one is what goes in this magic box. So this is kind of key. What goes in this magic box? So let's erase all of this over here. And let's talk about what are the central elements of Box2D. What are the things we're going to have to learn about to use Box2D? So Box2D has a bunch of elements. Number one, there's something called a world. Number two, there's something called a body. Number three, there's something called a shape. Number four, there's something called a fixture. And number five, there is something called a joint. So these are the central elements of Box2D. These are the kinds of objects that we're going to make. We're going to make bodies. We're going to make shapes. We're going to make fixtures. We're going to make joints. And we're going to put all those things in the magic box. And then we're just going to ask, where is everything? We would like to draw it with our own special colors and design and images, et cetera. So the key, the where we're, OK, so the world, first of all, we should kind of leave world up here. The world is, the wor the world is this magic box. So that's the world we need to, uh, the first thing we're going to do in a Box2D example is create that world. The second thing we're going to do in a Box2D example is start to put bodies in that world. The body is the central element that moves around the screen. It is the thing that has the physics. Has the physics? Is that, can something have the physics? Anyway, it's, it's the sort of central element. The interesting thing about a body is it, it is nothing. It's nothing. It's emptiness. It's just like this empty point that's moving throughout the screen. A shape is what actually has geometry. And a shape is what gets attached to a body. So if we look at a window, the body is this point that's going to move around and it's going to have a velocity. A shape is going to be the actual thing, you know, our little angry uh, bird here. I don't know. 
what I'm drawing. I can't believe I'm doing this. That's my <laughs> uh, edit, edit, skip, something, fix, whatever. Okay, so the, the shape is the thing with geometry. That's the actual shape. Is it a rectangle? Is it a polygon? Is it a circle? That's the thing we're going to attach to our body. How are we going to attach it to our body? With a fixture. So you can start to imagine here that you can see how using Box2D, even though we have this magic thing, right? Oh, it's going to be so easy. We just set up things in the world. Then we ask, where is everything? When we draw it, it's going to be so easy. It's not so easy because we got to make bodies and we got to make shapes and we got to make fixtures and, and we got to do all this stuff. So this is when we get to the code example, which we're very slowly inching our way to. In the next video, there's a lot of details we're going to have to work out. And, and most of this we can copy paste and just sort of look up. We don't have to memorize it, so to speak, but it isn't so easy. So the body is the, is the thing, that's the mover. This is the equivalent to the mover class that we've been making all along. The difference is now, our movers didn't have geometry. Sure, we drew something on the screen, but there was no collisions. So we have to start worrying about geometry, which we have to define shapes that are attached to bodies with fixtures. Joints, by the way, we're going to start to look at later, in, uh, towards the end of this section of videos, a joint is something that connects two bodies. So when we think about the pendulums we made, we could, or the springs, we might have a, a body and a body connected with a joint. That could be like a, a, a revolution joint, it could be a, a, a springy joint, there's a bunch of different kinds of joints we could look at um, in Box2D. Okay, so this is the overall picture. And um, I think, okay, so I think that's pretty good for right now. Um, what I would suggest to you, what I would do as your exercise here before the next video is get, make a basic processing sketch. Make an object that has a location and a size. Maybe it's a square, maybe it's a circle. And make an array list of those objects and just stick a whole bunch randomly on the screen or wherever you click the mouse, add objects. So make a sketch with no physics. It's just going to be a sketch, and I'll, I'll show you an example of this. Make a sketch that's like this, that I can just add objects to, and they don't do anything. What we need to do in the next video is actually take a sketch like this and stick Box2D in it. Say, like, okay, instead of just these objects that are drawn on the screen, we, we now want to have those objects move according to the physics of Box2D, and Box2D is just going to tell us where they are and what their rotation is, and we're going to draw according to what Box2D tells us. That's what we're going to get through in the next video. Okay, uh, any questions? I'm sure you have many. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to click this, and I'll see you in the next video.